Hey everyone, 37 killers, 45 survivors, 270 perks, 799 add-ons. There is a lot of content in DBD. It's a weird question to ask, does a game have too much content? It's certainly a better problem than having too little. It's the consequence of a live service in its ninth year that receives major content updates quarterly. These numbers are only going to get bigger with time. It's highly unlikely that things get removed. DBD is in sort of a fascinating situation. It's a very simple game at its core. Survivors need to do gens and avoid the killer. Killers need to hinder generators and hook survivors. Both roles can be explained in about a sentence. However, DBD is also insanely complex and requires you to learn a lot to really understand and master it. While sure, the basis is just doing a generator or hooking a survivor, there's a lot more to it when you bring in the variables, which is where this mass of content comes in. So let's take a dive into these and tackle this question of if DBD has too much content. Before even starting a match, you're hit with the offering screen, including events you can see up to 95 different kinds of offerings. Offerings that can affect the map directly, ones that are simply passive buffs, and ones that can alter how a match starts or finishes. And that's just the loading screen. When you load into the game, you can get one of 58 maps within 20 realms. Not only this, but the map you're on has randomly generated tiles aside a few fixed structures. Some maps also have invisible variations. Cold Tower, for example, has two different variants, but it doesn't tell you which when you load in. In the map match itself you have 4 survivors, who can pick from a range of 45 different survivors, or 57, including cosmetic characters. Each survivor typically has 4 different perks from a range of 146. They can also pick 1 of 31 items, each with unique add-ons. The killer can pick a character from a range of 37, each with their own unique power, and can run up to 4 perks from a range of 124. The killer further can run up to 2 of 20 unique add-ons for that killer. All these variables are happening before the game has even begun. To really excel at DBD2, you're sort of expected to know these things, to learn how every power, perk, and add-on works. But there's a limit, surely. I asked all of you what your level of knowledge was when it came to these things. Most people seemed comfortable with things such as killer powers, but were more uncomfortable when it came to perks. Add-ons were the clear weak point for most. I put lore in there too for a bit of fun. So this simplicity quickly becomes very complex. Speaking as someone who has their literal job centered around this game, and someone who spends far too many of my waking hours thinking about it, <laughs> I know I do not know all of these things. If I was shown an add-on from a random killer, there's a 50% chance I could tell you its effect. Let's test it quickly actually for all of you too. What does this add-on do? What about this one? Which add-on causes this? What about this perk? Maybe you just got them all right and now I look like an idiot, <laughs> but hopefully I proved my point. The thing with this is too is that even if you do know what all of this stuff is, it's not always possible to identify it in game. Many perks have overlapping effects or applications of statuses. Here for example, did that person have soul guard or was it we're gonna live forever? There are times when even if you know all of these things, you can't tell regardless. It was neither by the way, they were using a med kit with a styptic agent. See what I mean? You could say seeing this that this means if anything, it doesn't matter that there's so much content, because all of these have the same outcome anyway of the survivor getting endurance. But the point is more that there's so many ways this could have happened that your knowledge check almost doesn't matter anymore. Back in the day, you could more than likely identify each action and the perk or add-on that caused it, but I think that's a lot harder now. There are so many ways to do various things that it's becoming almost regressive in the way you learn. Speaking from personal experience, I know there's been a lot of times recently where I hit someone as killer and they got endurance, and I have no earthly clue what from. I know what possibly it could be from, but I don't know what exactly, where I probably would have about two or three years ago. So many things now do things that other things do, put simply. There's overlap on overlap with slight change or variation. To be fair, a good count 
counter to this is that the majority of the player base only uses the top 20 perks anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't really matter. But to me, it doesn't feel very rewarding, because I did enjoy when I knew everything there was to know about the game. I felt like having all this knowledge gave a distinct advantage. But now, even for some of the simpler skill checks, like what a killer's power does, I can fail on, because I missed a line on a patch, or an add-on was changed after it being the same for four years, stuff like that. It's so much knowledge to keep track of. The amount of changes Sadako Say has been through has just confused me. I'm not entirely sure how her power works, and after her reworks, I definitely could not tell you exactly what her add-ons do. You may just say I'm washed. That's probably partly true. I've given so much of my time to this game that, yeah, I do play it far more casually nowadays, and keep more focus on things I care about more, like the lore. With this said, this wasn't an entirely willing process on my part. I wish I did know the effects and uses of everything available, but with a full-time job, studying, a personal life, and just like, other game knowledge and lore, <laughs> it's too much to keep up with, even as a pretty hardcore and long-time player. In some ways too, I think it's too much for the devs, which is my next point. It's all well and good adding all this stuff, but balancing it and keeping it all up to date and in check is another thing, and no small task. As more characters get added, more perks, add-ons and more, all of these things need to be tended to and adjusted, buffed or nerfed. A huge task for anyone. This is why many things I think have been left unchanged too, or just very niche or useless, for long periods of time. The luck mechanic, for example, was released back in the first year of the game, yet it still has no effect beyond making your chances of unhooking yourself higher. A perk like Up the Ante just affects the odds of this and has been the same for nearly eight years. Because it's probably not a priority and it's not actively harming gameplay, so many perks like this too simply fly under the radar. According to Nightlight, nearly half of the 145 survivor perks have a pick rate of less than 1%. Many of these perks you may have never used or even seen in potentially hundreds of consecutive games. This isn't just for the big numbers though, even for killers, there's a bunch that are barely played. On Nightlight, 13 of the 37 have a pick rate lower than 2%. My point here is in sort of two sections. One, there's a bunch of characters and perks, and two, is it even worth giving these things the time of day if barely anyone uses them? There's already so much to handle, so why not focus on the stuff that people actually use? This is a valid mindset too, but it does mean for the people who do care about that stuff, it sort of sucks because they don't get much love. Recently, it was announced there was a PTB coming to change Skull Merchant again, this change possibly leaving her so nerfed down to the point of being near useless and extremely weak. It's been theorized that this is so she doesn't get played until there's time to give her a proper update. This is of course just a theory though, it's not necessarily true. Regardless of your thoughts on Merchant though, you have to admit it's not the right way to go about it if this is the case. It's happened in the past too, I think. A problematic character like Freddy in the 2020 area, with his Forever Freddy build, just got completely completely dunked on to the point of him being left boring and weak post rework. There's a Freddy rework coming, probably eventually, but the solution almost feels like it was to just kick him to the ground until the time is right to rework him, because there's possibly other more urgent problems or new content to push out. There simply might not be time at the moment to give Freddy the rework he needs, so just nerf him down intensely and pick him back up later. That way he's not causing problems, and no one's probably going to play him. It's why in a similar way there probably are a bunch of niche and weak add-ons and perks out there that don't get much usage. It means they don't really need much attention or changing, unless there's a drive to make them more accessible or usable or relevant. A perk like Poised Say is bad, but it doesn't cause any problems. It is a shame it gets neglected though. My overall point here when it comes to the amount of content the game has and the balancing of it and attending to it is that there's way too much. Even with Behaviour's fairly large dev team, I'm sure it's still too much. And I want to be clear, I don't expect them to change 50 perks a patch or anything like that. That's sort of my point, is that there's too much that needs changing and adjusting, and it's simply not possible to cover it all. Especially with the persistent influx of new content that will typically need more attention at the time of its release. 
Look at what happened with Merchant's release. She had updates throughout the entire year, and ones that likely took focus away from other characters had she just released in a more stable state. To finish this video off, I want to sort of pose a question to you and just ask basically what you will think about this. Is this really a problem? Is this something that needs fixing? Because I also don't want new content to slow down, because it's largely what drives the game. It's a precarious situation. Constantly adding new content does make it harder to manage the overall content as both a player but also for the devs, I'm sure. I'm only going to speculate of course because I'm not a dev and I don't want to speak for them. So there's too much stuff in the game, but stopping adding to it could also be bad for the game. It's a tough spot. I know though as a player, as a creator, and as someone who is just a huge fan of this game and the people who make it, I think this is becoming a fairly big problem. The game is slowly becoming less and less accessible, more and more bloated, harder to learn and keep track of, harder to balance and adjust. There's so much stuff in the game. Again, this is even ignoring large parts like the rifts, cosmetics, new features people want added, stuff like that. You know, the outcomes of those Q&As where they say, oh, that's coming in years of time and lore. I guarantee most people aren't even aware about like 90% of the law's existence. There's a lot more than you think, and some of it you can't even access in game. <laughs> but only through wikis and stuff like that. That's another video though. I do hope you enjoyed, thanks for watching, thanks for 200k, and good goodbye.